Welcome everybody back to another exciting show of the About That Wallet podcast. Today I have a woman that needs no introduction because she's been on here several times and it's my lovely wife. How you doing today, Lindsay? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm doing good. All right. So today we're going to talk about why have kids and the reason why we chose not to have kids. Um, but before we start, I do want to talk about some of this history. Um, I just did some quick research on CNN and I came across some good stuff. So they first thought off is that, you know, one of the most developing countries checked, uh, one of the most wealthiest check having a baby in the United States is more dangerous than anywhere in the world. And I thought that was pretty interesting. But then they further say that African-American women are three times likely to die from childbirth. Uh, white women is at 12.5. Uh, black women are 42.8. And other races at 17.3. Are those and this, percentages? These are percentages, yes. Okay. Uh, these. This is coming from the CDC's 2011 uh, pregnancy mortality rates, uh, ratios um, on their website. But they also say, what is the cause? And doctors think it's obesity, diabetes, older first time mothers, and lack of access to affordable health care. Um, but then they further say one out of three mothers will have C sections. Um, and this is based on the CDC's 2015 report of the National Vital Statistics Reports. So I just want to start off with that, with some of the uh, stats that's out there um, directly off the CDC website, since they control uh, everything statistical about people. So um, I guess we can start off on what made you decide not to have children? That's a lot of background. I mean, I have I uh, have been saying that I didn't want children since I was eight years old. I'm 36 now, so that's that's 28 years where I was just like, it's not for me. Um, at eight year old, at eight years old, my reasons obviously were different than they are now. But at the crux of it is, I um, never wanted that kind of responsibility for somebody else. Um, parenting is a big job and I don't think it's one that should be entered into by accident or lightly or if you're not 100% sure that that's what you want and as I've gotten older um, I've never moved over to a point of view where I really wanted it and I think that you really have to want to be a parent because I've seen the results of the opposite where the, ch the child knows on some level that their parent didn't want them or whatever. And it's like, ch children don't ask to be born. So if you don't want the child, then why have one? Yeah, I and agree. That's, and that's before you even get into what you were talking about as, for, as far as like black women being more likely to die or have childbirth complications it's before you get into potential pregnancy complications it's before you get into the finances as far as like how much it takes to um care for a child make sure that child has health care make sure you have postpartum health care make sure that um if you're if you're in a two working parent household which might not be as much of an issue now with people teleworking more but you know in the before times you know daycare costs and schooling costs clothes food it's a lot but at the at the heart of mine is i don't want to be responsible for somebody else i mean considering that you know you yourself is already a lot to take care of exactly yeah. I don't want pets for the same reason. Well, yeah, pets are a different story. I mean, <laughs> no, they're not. They, they really? No. Yeah, explain, explain a little bit more. Why I guess the it? only difference is that children, as they grow, they become more independent. 
pets mm-hmm. don't. You still have to make you still have to wash and feed and whatever a pet as no matter how old they are. But it's like I only want to take care of me. My life is mine. It's okay to be selfish. I mean, why is it why is it selfish though to say that your my life is mine? I mean, it's selfish to a lot of things are selfish. Anything you're doing because you want to do it is selfish. Right. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. It is it's good to be that way. I mean, you have to do it for yourself. Um, and not for other people and not other reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, because like you said, before it even gets to having a child, uh, when it comes to financial aspect of making sure that, you know, you have the finances to support a child along with yourself. And um, not to mention, if you don't want to be a deadbeat person or labeled as a deadbeat person (laughs) by just like almost giving up and just saying, you know what, I'm gonna have this child or make this person pregnant, and then I'm gonna leave the scene. Um, And, you know, it's like, why do people leave the scene? It could be multiple reasons. Um, And usually for the most part from other research and just listening to other parents, uh, the reason why they usually leave is because of finances. Um, Or that people attitudes change, you know, when they get get pregnant. Um, But yeah, I mean, just listening and watching other people have kids it's it's just one of those extra things i know that i won't be responsible for one it's um another thing is like you know you monitoring your time a little bit more uh like you can't hang out like you used to can't hang out as long as you want to vacations are cut but i don't know i mean but i mean you're you're now talking like you never wanted kids when did you decide that you didn't want kids? Because at first you told me you wanted at least one. And that's yep. another thing, everyone. Earlier on, he said he wanted at least one, maybe one. And I said, okay, well, I don't any. And there have, you know, there are a lot of marriages that dissolve because of that difference of opinion. So before we got married, I asked Anthony several different ways like are you sure because it's very unlikely that I'm going to change my mind so let's talk about your (laughs) journey to where you are now well I at least wanted one child um, in a sense to actually share knowledge of the things that I did not um, that I wasn't taught when I was growing up And then also wanted to share how, you know, just to kind of see what it would be to be a parent or dedicated where someone actually like looks up to you. And, you know, I just wanted to be that role model. But after talking to you and seeing as though you were very uh, adamant about not having children, and I was like, I really love you. I want to stay with you. And so if bringing like I I can't miss something that I didn't have so it was like just a little easier I was like all right well I mean I want to stay with this woman I want to continue on uh enjoying having our fun times together um so me leaving wouldn't have been I guess you say because I'm all stuck up on this checkbox of having a child Um, And I guess you can say bringing on the generation and so forth, or some people really feel as though just sharing that seat is bringing on this new generation for your life, but, or keeping a family DNA going. Um, But I I have other brothers and sisters that are doing that. Um, But for my choice, it was mainly um, because I really wanted to stay with you. And I thought that was the best thing for me so and for me in a relationship uh and I really wanted to to keep that so yeah um but at the same time my my questioning you wasn't like 
it wasn't like an ultimatum or something like no, that. It, it was more like, if this is what you really want, then mm -hmm. you should have it. But I'm not willing to give it, especially because I will, I know it's not even what I feel like. I was about to say, I feel like women have a lot more to lose in the process of bringing forth children. Um, it's a lot more dangerous for us. There's a lot more at risk. Um, men, you know, they say they want children, but like, I feel like it's a lot easier for men to say that they want children when they're not being pregnant. They're not carrying the child. They're not having the child, having to push the child out. They're not, or cutting the child out as what happens often. Um, they're not physically affected postpartum. Um, so, but at the same time, I was like, if that's what you want, I, I can't guarantee that I'm going to ever be open to it. Right. So I just wanted to make sure that we were a hundred percent clear on what I was willing to do and what I wasn't willing to do, because I don't think it serves anybody in a relationship to enter it under the premise of well maybe they'll change their mind mm -hmm. um so i think well, that was and that's with you is um i did understand that you know taking time out to make sure that uh i mean i know that you're not willing to change for any reason or for anyone and you change when you feel like it and it wasn't like I'm hoping that you'll change ever um, because obviously for one, we met at later ages where it's become more difficult uh, when it comes to birth challenges and pregnancy. Uh, so it wasn't one of those things I was just thinking, oh yeah, you're going to change now. I'm not that kind of guy. <laughs> yeah. So. But, but my yeah. whole point was like, if somewhere in the back of your mind, like that's really something that you want, then then we should probably, you know, end it sooner rather than later before we get too attached to each other. Yeah. That was that was my thinking. Okay. I mean, I I appreciate you sharing what you're thinking. But <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I share it then? You did. Um I was just thinking of what I was going through my head at the time. And mostly it was about making sure that you were okay and you were just having a good time. And I was having a good time too. Um, and I didn't want to change that. And then also with the things that I like to do that I was trying to catch up on life of doing different things, that having a child, um, well, being in a relationship with someone who had a child already and actually seeing, I guess you can say almost co-parenting uh, was someone for about four years or five years, um, six, years. six, all right. Yeah. Six years. Uh, and going through that process, it was, it was interesting to see the limitations of the different parenting styles and the type of person that I would be as a parent. Um, I really don't, would things be different? I don't know. Um, but her child was nice. I mean, we got along okay. Uh, but when it came to discipline, it was one of those different things of, um, you know, who's right, who's wrong, uh, who's actually the person that can actually discipline, what are the limitations. Like these things aren't really talked about <laughs> too often when it comes to co-parenting, like planning ahead of the time uh, mm -hmm. before taking on that, that challenge. Um, and so coming from that to now to just like being myself and being on my own for a little bit, I just really wanted to get some of that life back almost. Uh, in a sense, I can't turn back the hands of time, but it's just to do all the traveling that I wanted to do, um, really relax when I come home um, and enjoy the peace and quiet that we have. I mean, I know usually when you and I come home, it's just us and maybe the TV be on. Like we can be quiet for hours, just enjoying each other's time or holding each other or um, 
laughing at something ridiculous on the simpsons so or at something else but it's interesting <laughs> though like your what you've said here the reason why you wanted at least one was basically so you could share knowledge and as we can see you found a way to do that yes. with your podcast <laughs> yes. so um it's it's i think it's very in- important to identify like what it is you are what you want and and really decide like i mean because some people just want babies fine if you want babies have babies by all means but that's that's not what you told me so that's why i kind of kept like asking and confirming like are you sure that this is what you want because when you first told me that you wanted at least one you didn't say i want at least one because i want to pass down what i've learned that wasn't taught to me you didn't say that you just like i want at least one and so for me somebody says they want a kid then they want a kid they don't really have to justify it right. um if that if that's what you want you should have what you want but it's interesting um i guess once we explored that line of conversation a little more it turned into you know more of you wanted to pass on knowledge and um kind of like leave something behind I think is another thing you mentioned and so now you've got this yeah um and that's one of the leading reasons why I started the show was to kind of share that knowledge and actually impact somebody's life or someone's child or some generation uh, with the education that I've came across to kind of help, you know, society as a whole, uh, a lot bigger reach and further reach than if I just had one child. And Mm -hmm. could you, and I'm just thinking now is that I wouldn't be able to reach as many people now if I just had a child. I wouldn't, I don't think I would actually started this podcast at all. Um, to be honest, uh, for one is because I don't really think, uh, I look good on video. I like stills, but, (laughs) and then also my voice and because I do have a small lisp and reading is, doesn't come easy, but (laughs) (laughs) you you're laughing too hard over that, baby. I I mean, (laughs) Okay. (laughs) <laughs> so i figured talking and video would be a lot easier to reach those people and then with the auto with the uh technology and ai to kind of help do the captions which helps out a lot so but yeah let's get back to why we chose not to have kids i thought we i thought we uh covered all of the bases yeah we um, did cover the bases um i, I mean and then also like I am used to being or having a certain level of control over my body. And when you're pregnant, you just don't have that anymore. And that is realistically, that is scary to me. Um, Even, (laughs) even like minor health problems um, kind of bother me because it's like, I didn't sanction this, you know what I mean? Like my body is doing something that I didn't, that I, I didn't plan for it to do. And, and that's all pregnant, well, assuming that people plan their pregnancies. But beyond that, you can't plan how, how that pregnancy works out. You know, how your body's going to react. You could, I mean, I'm sure you've seen some people actually, or some women, gain a lot of weight from that, having children and haven't lost it yet. Well, and, and you're supposed to gain weight when you're right. pregnant, of course. But I'm not even talking about the weight gain, but that is part of it. But you know, there, there are instances where women have, you know, perfectly normal pregnancies and then it all goes left when it's time to deliver the baby. And, and there are a lot of things that you just cannot foresee. And I'm a very risk averse person. Yes, you and, are. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I don't play around with um, myself. I don't play around with my body I don't play around with my money I'm not a gambler (laughs) and 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 that is a huge gamble in my mind 
women die from I mean like obviously I could walk outside and get hit by a bus at any time but like um we we're all gambling on a daily basis but that is is it's a very it's a very um risky thing and that's just getting the baby here right that's not even talking about raising the baby once it is here it's just the juice isn't worth the squeeze for me i got you yeah and i was just looking up uh what is the average cost of raising a child and it's about two hundred thirty-three thousand dollars. and this is for a child that was born in 2015 this is coming from the usda.gov mm -hmm. website um, titled The Cost of Raising a Child. Um, and I thought that was pretty interesting that they just kind of have it that price range. And I thought it would be more, at least maybe in a 300000 maybe 500000 I would imagine that's probably an average for the nation. Yeah. I would, I would guess that it's probably higher or lower depending on the cost of living in the area. Yeah. where you are yeah they did say on average um but the thing about it like how much people spend throughout the years for the um baby showers and then it comes to the first birthday then the second birthday and then so on up into college all the sports all of the different activities that they change their mind midway i mean a lot of people haven't thought about it yet um, cause some of the, some of my friends have kids and they still under five, actually they, most of them are under three. And when I asked them about like, well, are you planning on doing homeschooling? Are you planning on doing, uh, in class private school? They don't, they don't know yet. Um, and so these are some of the things that I'll be thinking about if I were to ever have a child is like the long-term gain at least plan for it financially and go that route. But, you know, most people are taking it day by day when it comes to children, but not thinking long term. Uh, so they skip out on a lot of the, the finances, the savings. Um, how can they actually strategize to plan to have this child and bring it into into light? I did interview Jeff. Uh, Jeff, who does um, personal, what they call them? Training. Personal training, yes. Thank you. How do you say uh, cucumber? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and with Jeff, he was just explaining to me is, is that, you know, he, he doesn't know. All he could do is just plan financially uh, to bring the child into, into the world. And that's the only thing that they can really control, how the baby reacts, how the baby is going to function, how his wife is going to uh, live and and be well and actually talk about the mindset of actually having a child um, going through the ups and downs. What if the child doesn't like them? But, yeah, we don't have to what? worry about that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's I, I mean, for me, I I if I were to put myself in the shoes of somebody who actually wanted children, I don't know that I probably would be thinking about whether the child liked me or not, but I mean, they probably should, but I don't think most people do. For me, it's more like the education piece. My parents made the decision to put me in private school. And a large part of that is because um, my father was friends with someone who worked in the local school system um, in the county where we lived and what he was hearing wasn't satisfactory to him. So they decided to put me in private school. That's an added expense. Now, my dad is not here for me to ask. I could ask my mom, but like whether they had thought about that at the time of my birth or before I was born. But um, if you make that decision, then that USDA estimate, I would imagine, skyrockets over the course of it. Because I was in private school from pre-K until 12th grade. Wow. So that's 13, 13 14 years of, of private schooling. 
And the average cost back then was probably what, like eight thousand, five thousand. I I wasn't paying it. I okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but because uh, really, education is the educational system is designed to maintain the status quo in society, mm-hmm. and and that is probably the most important part of our society because you need more citizens to prop up the society and function so that would probably be my main concern like how is this child going to be educated aside from you know keeping him or her safe and healthy and things like that the other thing is like he or she is going to need to be able to read here preferably before you get before he or she gets to school I'm not going to be relying on the school to teach my child phonics and basic arithmetic and things like that and then also we we already know what kinds of things that the school system leaves out many people are financially ignorant and the educational system is is not designed to teach you about like real personal finance or those kinds of things so it would for me it's when I say I don't want to be responsible for somebody that's what I mean I don't want to be responsible for making sure that I am producing a productive member of society because there are plenty of people in society who are not productive members for one reason or another but I bet their parents did not intend for that to go that way so there's a lot on the line when you talk about like adding somebody to the uh the population yeah i didn't even think about it from a population standpoint but you do bring up a good point um even though within the past what was it i would say like 20 years doing the research they were saying is that uh teen pregnancies were about 61 percent in 1997 and then it dropped down to about 40 one percent by 90 you know by 2015 so having that huge gap uh in pregnancy rate and now all of a sudden over the pandemic you hear oh it's a crisis teens aren't having babies like they used to no one is right i mean like people (laughs) like people that we call millennials Mm -hmm. so like people i believe born between 1984 and 1996 maybe are just not having children at the same rate as Generation X and baby boomers. I mean, a lot of that has to do with the student loan crisis. Like people can't afford to have children (laughs) and support themselves um, because they owe hundreds of thousands of dollars to their colleges or whatever. But then the other part of it is, I think there has been a mindset shift where before some where before like having children was just something that you do Mm -hmm. or something that happened um now a lot more women especially are like well I have autonomy and if this isn't what I absolutely 100% want to do why would I do it and then there are ways to keep it from happening Right. And they push it out heavy on people not having kids, which is, well, remember when we were growing up, I'm not sure if it was, but when I was in, was it high school and middle school, they pushed heavy for contraceptives. Hey, make sure you have a condom. Make sure you have this. Talk about all the STDs and all the different things that come with having sex in general. And then next thing you know, hey, you know, after all these years of telling this generation not to have sex and practice abstinence and make sure you use contraceptives and take all these antibiotics. And it's like, what do you expect people to do? You know, not have children, right? (laughs) My experience was a little different, though, because I went to Catholic high school. So (laughs) we were given the, you know, we, they didn't talk to us about contraceptives but it was basically either abstinence or you're you're going to get an std so don't do it unless you're married 
then it's okay. To and then when an you're STD. married, <laughs> no, not to have an STD, but to have a child, then it's okay to have sex. And then because you're married, it's okay to have a child. And the married, we actually had a, a class called Christian Lifestyles, mm-hmm. where <laughs> they outlined several different paths you could take. One was the single life, which is you are a good Catholic, but you're not married and you don't have sex because you're not married. You don't have children because you're not married and you just live your life. The second one was the religious life. That's, you know, you become a a priest or a nun or whatever. Obviously no children there. Third one was the married life and the married life assumed that you were going to have a child because Mm -hmm. you're allowed to have sex and they didn't teach us about contraception. So (laughs) the, the crowning glory, I guess, of that class was that everyone who took it had to carry around like a pound of sugar or five pound bag of sugar for a week to, you know, like, like it was your child. Yeah. Why did they (laughs) do sugar? Like we did eggs. Well, you said it's a Catholic school. So. I mean, right. eggs are no <laughs> eggs are no less Catholic than sugar, but I guess they wanted it to be to approximate the size of like a newborn mm-hmm. or whatever. So yeah, so my my um, schooling was a little different in that regard, but I mean, I picked up stuff on the streets. <laughs> so <laughs> and radio. And, and radio and television and media. And, um, and again, my mother didn't leave it up to the Christian school. Cause like my parents put me in Christian and Catholic schools, but it wasn't necessarily because of the religion. It was just because they were private schools and that was what was nearby. So my mother got me, um, a book when I, when I hit puberty, basically, that talked about contraception and, you know, what's happening to your body and the the changes you're going through and, you know, what eventually will happen. It went through pregnancy and went through childbirth birth and all those other kinds of things. Had she just been relying on what I was learning in school, I wouldn't have got any of that. So. Yeah. Um, wow. That's interesting. Right. <laughs> So I want to talk about um, just a little bit about this book that I got from the library, which I thought was pretty interesting. And it's called, I read this on the Metro a couple of times called uh, Why Have Kids? Uh, A New Mom Explores the Truth About Parenting and Happiness. So I was reading this on the Metro a couple of times, uh, (laughs) going back and forth to work, but I never finished it because I actually only got down to the part where it says mother knows best, which is like chapter six. But I want to talk about um, just some of the titles here in this content. Uh, So the first thing I saw off the whole first six chapters is about lies that are talked about for children. It says chapter one, children make you happy. Uh, Number two is women are the net are the natural parent. Number three, breast is best. Number four, children need their parents. Number five, the hardest job in the world. Number six, mother knows best. Now, I thought that was actually interesting that she put that as lies. Um, and a lot of the stuff in here was, was pretty understandable. Um, and one thing I thought was interesting that she talked about, which is breast is best because a lot of women feel as though they're not worthy enough if they cannot breastfeed their child Mm -hmm. um, versus using like formula or other type of nutrients and I I thought that was pretty interesting but I want to talk about some of the truth though and it's from 7 to 12 chapter 7 to 12 so 7 is giving up on parenthood Number eight, bad mothers go to jail. Well, this is quote unquote, bad mothers go to jail. Number nine, smart women don't have kids. Number 10, death of 
the nuclear family. Number 11, women should work. Number 12, why have kids? But one of the things I want to talk to you about mostly is about smart women don't have kids. What do you think? You think that is true just based on the title? No, I, I know plenty of smart women who have children, my mother mm-hmm. included. Um, but I think it's really, like I was saying, it boils down to what you want. Like, just because you're a smart woman doesn't mean that you don't want to be a mother. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't mean that, uh, it does. I mean, I've heard something about a biological clock that women say they have. I haven't experienced that, but just because you're educated and, and whatever, that doesn't mean that that goes away. Um, I would hazard a guess that smart women are probably a little more thoughtful about having children. They don't, you know, they don't just happen to smart women. They don't um, let it happen. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but i mean you do hear those stories like oh yeah well we just happen to have a child like michelle obama is very smart and she has two children right so no, but without was that by choice seen... yeah you didn't read becoming i did read it with you we had our little <laughs> book club together yes. yeah like she goes through the whole thing like she you know she was doing i think um ivf or something like that Yes. Like, and I, you don't do that if you don't want children. So, it's my so you, copy. Just ha- you just had it queued up. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 yeah you know. Anyway, a very smart woman who has children and she wanted children. So, I mean, however, I don't know that I can really speak intelligently about the title of that chapter because I haven't read that book. No, it's fine. I mean, and it I'll also just... seems like she picked chapter titles that were a little inflammatory on purpose i mean that's all marketing the whole book is called why have kids of course it's going to get somebody's attention right well it got my attention it got the people's attention on the metro when you were reading it in public right (laughs) (laughs) right because it was i I purposefully brought that book out mainly because when you see the kids um yelling screaming running up and down the, the metro and then you get some teenagers just want to flip around on the poles and then that's, I, being, that's children being children though right it is and then <laughs> but the thing about it the parents seem so embarrassed and i'm like well, why are you embarrassed like you brought them into this world you know how they are so you know either you own it and and just make it happen but i don't know i'm not a parent so i could be talking out the side of my cheek here <laughs> but I, I do uh like not having the the uh a child and i guess you can call it the the dank life dual income no kids yeah i've i've heard tell of that you don't like that i'm not really for cutesy acronyms but you know whatever you want to call it i i don't know where we're a married couple with no children, like, yeah, the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what else is there to say? Yeah, so true. All right. Well, I think we uh, we went through a, quite a bit today. Is there anything else you want to add? Um, no. Okay. Well, everybody, it's been a fun time again talking to you. And, uh, you know, Wait, we don't to, do four questions. We don't, you say you don't want to do the four questions. I didn't say that. You don't like no four questions. You're like, oh, the questions never change. What's Maybe that? my answers have changed. Did they really? I don't know. Well, let me pull up my questions now. I can ask them all the time. So, what does wealth mean to you? Okay, my answer for this hasn't changed. But <laughs> wealth means to me that your money is working for you and you don't have to work for your money. It means you're independently wealthy. You do not have to go to a job every day hoping to collect a check every two weeks or bi-monthly. 
means that you have enough working for you that you don't have to if you don't want to. Okay. What did you learn from your worst job? Ooh, that's a new one for me. It is. Um, well, first, I guess I should review what my worst job was, which uh, on the first episode I was on, I said was my first job as an office assistant at a nonprofit when I was 14. And it was really only my worst job just because it took me out of my comfort zone. I was a very shy child and I had to answer the phones as part of my duties. And that was like torture to me because I just did not feel comfortable talking to strangers or anything like that. Majoring in journalism and working as a journalist kind of brought me out of that a lot. I don't have a problem talking to strangers anymore, but back then I really did. So uh, my worst job taught me that um, moving outside of your comfort zone is where growth happens. I like that. I like that. Moving out of your comfort zone is where growth happens. And that's actually kind of paraphrased from something I read, but I can't remember. I can't remember where or like who, to whom to attribute it, but yeah. Okay. So what is your favorite financial book or non-financial book? I'm glad you added it to non-financial. Um, I don't have any financial, any favorite financial books. Um, actually, I guess I do. Well, it's not really a favorite, but I had to read a lot of financial books when I was studying for the CPA exam. Mm. I did not enjoy studying that, but I guess that would be my favorite. Um, <laughs> non-financial, though. <laughs> what, what's the name of this book? The name of the book? Yeah. Oh, you want me to give my CPA study materials out? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so your CPA study materials is, is, is your, my financial book. Is your favorite I... financial book? <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> right. Okay. That's Becker CPA. So it's like, no. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my favorite non-financial book, I actually am, I have a lot of books that I want to read now that I have time to again, but I still would say that my favorite non-financial book is probably either um the chronicles of narnia series and then actually i was talking with some old friends a couple of days ago when we were talking about some other classics like little women and the secret garden and those kinds of books that i probably should revisit uh soon because i haven't re read them in a while okay, i like so i prefer fiction to nonfiction. got it so it's not about called uh her garden is it no, it's called okay. The Secret Garden. The Secret Garden, okay. Yes. Got it. I had to uh, take a look into that. Mm -hmm. And what is your favorite pastry? Still apple pie. The American pie. In all of its iterations, including from McDonald's. Even McDonald's pie? especially mcdonald's pie they're so convenient and it's vegan too and then i don't i can't 100 percent verify that <laughs> but there are there didn't appear to be any animal products in the list of ingredients but also i'm not that well versed in how animal products hide in those chemically sounding names mm -hmm. so i don't know but yeah apple pie and then i guess a close second would be I like custard pies, mm. pumpkin, sweet potato, coconut. I mean, that's all you really need, right? Those three. <laughs> what other custard pies do you need? There's custard pie without the coconut component. Yeah. But I'm not coconut, that crazy about that. Yeah. Coconut adds so much more to it. All right. Well, I don't have anything more. Uh, again, you can listen to... I guess you could say this is part three of our series of understanding me and my wife's dynamics. You can listen 
you have seen her and well not seen her but you have listened to my wife's voice in previous episodes such as <laughs> episode 31 and episode 15 episode 15 was when sh exclamation point t hits the fan and episode 31 I gotta look that up. I forgot which one. That was combining about. households. Oh yeah, combining households. I don't forget that one. That was fun. That was a fun topic. Mm-hmm. All right. It's when we first introduced the kid thing, and then we decided to table it for another episode. That's so here, true. And here I am, six months later. Yeah. So what's it be our next one? We should talk about. Right, it's up to you. It's your podcast. Well, I know it's our podcast, but you know <laughs> what you feel comfortable. Because I, I think we talked about the kids. We talked about how we met. Mm-hmm. We talked um, about combining households. Combining households. Pretty much our lives now. What, what are we gonna talk about? There? <laughs> I guess the I guess the other part is, I guess if the people demand it, um, if I if I come back, otherwise it's just it could be maybe our f- future plans financially. Okay, that's the only thing I could think of. Let's go with it. Um, because since I do talk about a little bit of history, we talk some strategies, and now we gotta talk about the features. Mm-hmm. All right. You heard it from her, folks. <laughs> Happy why. <wife>. Happy life. <laughs> All right, everybody. Take care. I'm out. Peace.